Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Today, I am so excited to share something with you that I found through my friend Dan Burke. He has a ministry, spiritualdirection.com. It is chock filled with goodies. I get an email. There's also the Avila Institute. There's a lot of things that you can sign up for. You could really increase your spiritual knowledge through Dan Burke and his lovely wife. And I get the emails, and when something piques my interest, I take a look. Well, I took a look at that last email that I received a couple days ago, and it was St. Michael's Center for Spiritual Renewal. And there was this priest who every month goes live on YouTube and walks people through deliverance. And so I signed up, I put my email in and I got a link and it's every month. It it happened this past Tuesday, I think. And so I'm putting that link in the description for all of you. I want to share why do we need deliverance? You all know that I'm a big proponent of casting out spirits throughout the day. You know that it's not a physical battle that we're battling really. It's powers and principalities. It's the world, Satan, and our flesh that we are battling that take us away from God, that take that peace, that joy, that love, that just happiness that we all seek. It disappears when we're attacked, when we allow the world to get to us and to pull and pull our strings of emotions and also our flesh, when we just allow ourselves to just do whatever we want because we want it. We need to master our bodies, right? We need to have control over our physical selves. And by using deliverance prayers daily, it helps along the journey. Now, it's not always evil spirits that are causing you to do things. I'm the first one to say I'm not one of those people that says the devil made me do it every single time something happens or every time I'm challenged with living virtuously. That is not what I am saying. But if we can deliver the spirits and find that peace, why wouldn't we? If we can deliver those spirits and find that self-control or that love or dismiss that anger or that resentment, why wouldn't we do it? So deliverance, again, there are two different things. One, you do it along the day, every day, as you pay attention to how you're living. So let's say you wake up and you feel so lethargic and tired. Cast out the spirit of lethargy, of yawning. Let's say you 
are trying to do better with your mind, body, soul, and spirit, and you're trying to eat better, but yet you have this desire for something really bad for you and you don't want to have it, but yet you are fighting internally this bodily urge. Cast out the spirit of gluttony, of addiction. Cast out the spirit of of lack of self-control. And you might be surprised where you all of a sudden don't feel lethargic. You have this beautiful kind of energy flow over you in the first instance. In the second instance, you may have the most amazing peace fall over you once you cast out that bodily urge to go have that food, have that drink, have that smoke, what have that drug, whatever it is, watch that porn. This is why we need to pay attention to what emotions and spirits are coming to us throughout the day and then cast them out. And the more that you do, the more you will remember to do it. Because the first time you feel that sense of peace or that sense of self-control or whatever it is, the opposite of that vice, you will be amazed You will know, holy cow, there is so much power in the name of Jesus. And he has so much control over the spirits that you will not forget, although you will. (laughs) I mean, let's be honest. I have clients and myself. I forget myself because I'm not paying attention to stop, pray, deliver those spirits. And I want to share a little bit more about this actual video, which is a much larger deliverance exercise. Right now, I'm just covering the day-to-day stuff, the day-to-day things that come to us that we have to battle. And that's why it's super important for us to just remember that we have this armor in our I don't know, arsenal. (laughs) We have, uh, let's say that, that arrow in our quiver, right? We, We have it sitting there, but a lot of us don't use it. So that's why I just keep harping on that fact. And there's two things I want you to remember. Number one, you have to say it out loud. In this video, he says, the priest, he says, you know, you can name these people or, or name these spirits in your heart. I firmly disagree with that. I know he's an exorcist priest, but I also know that Satan cannot read our thoughts. Thank you, God. I can't imagine if he could. Satan has access to our memory and our emotions, and that's what he uses to mess with us. He does not have the capability to read our minds. So when we cast out spirits, we have to say him out loud. So that's number one. And number two, when we're done casting out the spirit, we have got to remember to pull in God's spirit, the opposite vice that we are casting out. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of lethargy and yawning. And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood blood on you and to receive your sentence never to come back again. Step one. Step two. Father, 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 please, in the name of your son, Jesus, fill me with your zeal for life. Fill me with your spirit. That's the double whammy. And if you don't fill yourself with the spirit, guess what? It's just like in the Bible where that spirit left that person went around, couldn't find another place to go, came back to the original person and found that everything was nice and tidy and clean and all swept up. And that spirit brought seven other spirits worse than the first. And the state of that person's soul was worse than when he cast out the first demon. That's very important. We have to remember 
cast out the bad, pour in the good. We want to fill ourselves to the brim with the Holy Spirit and the opposite of the vice that we're casting out. That's just the daily stuff, you know? Try it. I'm telling you, people have reached out to me, asked me again for that prayer. I've typed it out to them, and it's so gratifying. It really is when I get the responses where the people are like, oh my gosh, what was that? I had total peace. It's real. You've got to believe it. Just trust in all of Jesus's promises. He told us that greater things than these will you do in my name. That's all we need to remember is the in my name piece. Okay, what is this video? This is the second part of my podcast today, and then I'm going to let you go, and I pray, 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 pray that all of you at least go through this video on your own. It's 50 minutes, five zero, not even a full hour. And again, I went through it myself so that I could make sure that it was exactly what I thought it was, and it is. So what is it? If you remember my incredible deliverance experience when I read the book Unbound by Neil Lozano, I also was so excited that I wanted to learn how to minister to people in this deliverance process. So I took a nine-week course and I got certified to minister this deliverance to other people. And I was pleasantly surprised that it's pretty much the same process that I was taught. So yay, very happy. So I really feel comfortable and confident in this. However, I even like this better because it's a priest and it's an exorcist priest. And so there are two people, a priest and a woman, and they actually go through the entire process. Like you start out with prayer, you start out reading the gospel, You start out with your act of contrition, and then you get involved in the actual deliverance. And it goes through delivering. Oh, first we forgive people, the ones that have hurt us the most. And it's really important for us to know that we're not necessarily having to change our hearts. We may say the words and ask Jesus to forgive for us, but we may still have, you know, harbored feelings of disdain for those people. It's not that we don't forget or we justify what people have done to us. We just have to let it go to God and give him our anger and give him our hurt and our pain. And then he walks through breaking soul ties with people that maybe you have had bad relationships with or people that you've had out of marital relations with. And then he continues to go through generational spirits and some other things. It's very thorough. It's pretty dry and you get to read along. So I would suggest, honestly, do it on a computer just because it was hard to read even on a Mac screen on my phone and know that as you go along, you may have to pause. I paused all the way through. I went, I didn't just watch this. I actually participated in it. I went through the people that I needed to forgive, the spirits that I needed to deal with, and I went through as an active participant. And I found that there wasn't enough time during the live broadcast for me to identify all the names, all the spirits, all the things that I was wanting to cast out. So I would pause it a lot. I strongly suggest that you pause it too, or watch it all the way through, and then put your maybe list of people and list of spirits and things so that when you can go through it again, you've got everything identified because you repeat it three times in this particular video. And I found by the third time I was finding new people and new spirits. So that's just my suggestion. And my last suggestion is, again, he suggests that you either talk to God in your heart. I do not suggest that. I suggest you say it out loud. That's why you should find a place that's peaceful and quiet and by yourself. 
and read along with the woman. I let the priest say the priest stuff because the priest is the one that can cast out spirits at a different level. We're laity people, right? We're not religious and we're not priests. So he says things that we cannot, but when the woman who is invisible, you only hear her voice, reads along, I read with her because I wanted to pray. I wanted those words to come out of my mouth. So lastly, stay with me here. Why? Why do we need this big kind of deliverance 50-minute thing? Why can't I just deliver spirits as I go throughout the day? I'm 51 years old. When I did my first deliverance process, meaning I activated all of the five keys that were in the Unbound book, just like this video does, and I went through my forgiveness and renouncing sins and soul ties and occult and spells, that's what the last part is, if there are any witchcraft or spells or generational spells that have been put on you and your family, sometimes we don't even know this happens to us. I personally know a woman who was praying with someone in a Catholic church who had people over to pray. She had a prayer group. And this woman thought that this person was super holy and come to find out when they were praying, quote unquote, in tongues in this prayer group, that woman was a witch. She was a Wiccan and she was casting spells on the people that were in this group. So this woman that I know personally who wrote a book on this, it's not published yet. I'm trying to help her get it out there. She wrote a book on this and bottom line, she had spirits in her house. Her children were attacked by Holy spirits. They ended up having to move out of the house. I mean, they were, they had spells cast on them. And so she had to go through this process of deliverance. And she was the one that introduced it to me years ago. And at that time, I wasn't ready to accept it because I really didn't get it. I believe that there was Satan. I, I actually honestly kind of looked at her and said, come on, there's, how does that happen? And why would someone do that? Why would someone do that? Because that's, they are not filled with God's spirit. They've done the one thing, the one blaspheming thing, which is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit by kicking out God's spirit and putting in evil through witchcraft, through occult, through Freemasonry, through all of these other ways that are anti-Christ. Now, where I'm at on my journey, I look back and I say, boy, I really wish I listened to her because it was two years before I finally was introduced <laughs> to deliverance and realized, oh my goodness, how come I'm just hearing about this now? But technically I didn't. I heard it from this woman, but I never really heard about it from priests. So again, when I went to my priest, 160 people priest talk, I told all of them, I'm like, guys, <laughs> you need to teach us how to pray, but you also need to teach us about deliverance. You know, we're out there flailing along. We don't even know that we have the, this most powerful weapon in this war that we can use. Okay, so why deliverance? Because for 47, 46 years, I can't even remember, 46 years or so, I was living a horrible life. I was watching porn. I was doing drugs. I was sleeping around. I was committing adultery. I was watching pornography. I was self-gratifying. I was doing everything. I was talking about people, maybe even, you know, I don't think I ever really created lies, but I probably embellished things and passed things on that I shouldn't have. And I just lived a horrid, horrid life. And in addition to that, I wore mood rings as a kid. I had a lucky rabbit's foot that I wore around my jeans on the belt buckle. I 
played the Ouija board. I watched horoscopes. I read them and I believed in them. I had someone do astrology and read my palms and all of that. When we live sinful lives, we cut ourselves off from God and we basically open up doors and windows for evil to come into us. And that means you're still, even though you're not being attacked because I was doing everything the spirits wanted me to do. So they didn't need to probe me along, if you will. They were just in me and continually putting those thoughts and those desires and those needs. And I was just reacting and doing and reacting and doing, never thinking twice about it. And then when I have all of these little occult practices and maybe someone gave you a crystal or someone gave you something and said, oh yeah, rub this, it'll calm you. And maybe all this new age stuff is coming your way and yoga, etc. When you open yourself up, the, the spirits come right on in and they don't have to leave until you tell them to leave in the name of Jesus. So that is why when I went through my long deliverance through the Unbound book, that I physically felt the spirits leave me in a supernatural way. It was physical in my body and I was so light. And as I would go through with my clients, this process, the same thing happened with a vast majority of them. That they felt different. They felt lighter as if they got into their soul with that vacuum cleaner and that long extension, sucking out those spirits that are in the dark corners of our souls. That's why the longer version is important because it does, it goes into your generational spirits. It goes in like alcoholism, I think is a generational spirit in my, in my family. I think possibly adultery might be too. So we don't know (laughs) what has happened in our previous ancestors' lives or what they did to bring things into their lives that then passed down and passed down and passed down. So that is why I encourage all of you to watch this video, maybe take your notes, and then do the video. Speak because it's hard to do it both at the same time, but I did it. I've already done the big deliverance thing, but that's my suggestion. And then do it once a year. Go through that big, massive process because here's what happens. Yes, you cast all the spirits out, but some of them have been hanging around with you for decades and they want to come back. So they're going to come back and do everything to tempt you to open up those doors and windows for them to come back in. So that's why sin is so bad, because when we sin, especially mortal sin, we pretty much open our souls to any spirit to come on in. And like the Bible said, he'll come back and he'll bring seven more worse than the first. So at the very end, we pray a a prayer of protection on that video and you know, for asking the spirit of God to come into us. So it's exactly the same process. Okay. I know that this is a long video, but it's so important. It's critical to your journey. Even if it doesn't make sense to you right now, like it did for me. I, when that chick was talking to me about her stuff, I was like, you're crazy. I really, I, I maybe like it was a 50, 50 thing because I wasn't there yet. I didn't really believe that spirits can really physically manifest themselves. But if you start researching deliverance and you start looking at the three ways that they can come into our lives, which is possession, a vast majority of people are not possessed. They just get the other two. Oppression, which is things in your life are impacted. You could have things fall off the wall. You can have physical attacks. And I've known people who have had spirits choke them at night, stick their fingers down their throat. They can come and attack you in your dreams. 
I was physically pushed down on my bed the two nights that I was reading that book. I didn't see any spirits, but I know darn well two hands of some sort pushed me down and I knew there was something in that room. Oppression can also be affecting your finances, your relationships. It's a, it's a physical manifestation of bad in your world. I'm going to use a quick uh, example. Father Ripperger, who is the author and an exorcist priest of Deliverance Prayers for the Laity, had said that one of his people that he was ministering to had a business and nobody was paying him. And so they went through deliverance and he was being oppressed. All of a sudden, within a month, all of his payment came in and his business didn't have to get shut down. The evil spirits can also oppress relationships. It, they're just so devious. The last one is obsession. And you can be attacked with obsessive thoughts. That's <laughs> so let's say you're trying to quit smoking or you're trying to diet. All of a sudden you can't think about anything else other than food or a smoke. For me, I was being attacked when I was going to speak to the 160 priests. I couldn't think about what I was going to talk to them about for three hours. All I could think about was how stupid I was for thinking that I should do this. How badly I needed to go back into the corporate world because my husband just wants me to make some money and how stupid I'm going to look because I am not holy. I don't know the things that these priests do. I am such an idiot. Why did I do this? And all I did was cry. It was overwhelming. And it was two weeks of this until I finally <laughs> reached out to my spiritual director, who's a priest. And he said, oh yeah, you're being attacked. And that was when I went through the Unbound book. But now you don't have to read the book. You can just go through this video. Please tell me how it goes or send me an email, Kendra at KendraVonEsch.com with questions, experiences, and I pray that you take this step to clear out your soul and maybe even go to confession right after and bring some of those things, that lack of forgiveness or whatever it is that might be coming to your mind that the Holy Spirit raises to your eyes. And you won't regret it, I promise. Okay, listen to this again if you need to, and then go do that video. I pray that all of you find the freedom in Jesus and find that peace that all of us are searching for. Alrighty, everyone. I love you all. I'm so serious about this. May you find something more with God and Jesus and the power of his precious blood to eliminate this evil in your life and live a more virtuous life so much easier. Have a blessed and inspired day.